I did a video once before on uh, why, are, why are camera lenses so complex, and I thought I'd expand on that idea and give you some insight of why lenses don't work. <laughs> I think in simple science class, or maybe your first physics class or whatever, you get a picture, you get a picture like this one. It says, uh, here's a lens, and you've got parallel rays of light coming in, and those parallel rays of light end up at a point over here. Okay, we can zoom in there, and all those little rays there are at a point. And they give you some equations that are very simple and stuff. But those are all wrong. <laughs> uh, what happens in the real world is that you have more than one ray. Okay? So let me put in, uh, let me put in some more rays. So here, here are more rays. And you can say, oh, look, it's, it's working great over there still. But if you zoom in on it, uh, it's the, no, only, <laughs> only these guys are still working. Um, these uh, other rays aren't focusing in the same place. And that comes down to um, spherical surfaces aren't the ideal shape. <laughs> and uh, so you, you have problems like this, all right? So that's, that's one issue. Um, we'll talk about a different issue. I'm not going to put names on everything because I don't want this to be an optics class. You know, this is like spherical aberration, but we won't care about that. Um, so let's go ahead and say, okay, well, you know, they always draw it like this. But let's look at um, light coming in from an angle. Um, so light's coming in from an angle and going through the lens. Um now look at what happens over here. Whoa, it gets really, really messy. So, yeah, uh, lenses don't work good except for on-axis light. They, 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 get, they get bad over here, right? I can go back to those three, three rays. You can see even those, just, those simple three rays that used to be perfect last time, they're just in different places. And you can sort of see that, um, well... They take different paths through the lens. If we take just the lens, you can sort of imagine that this one kind of takes a short path and this one takes a longer path. Now, these guys are kind of long, that guy's kind of short. Um, and it takes a while for this ray to finally get there off axis. There's a whole bunch of reasons why this, this is a bit different. But um, yeah, so if we go back and we turn on... All the rays. There we go. So you can see that um, we might have the center kind of in focus, but the outside's going to be kind of blurry. And we can sort of view this as an optical engineer in something called a spot diagram. And a spot diagram is a graph of how light is hitting the, the image here, right? So in the center, it's kind of hitting in a round shape, right? And that's because the rays are coming in straight to the lens and the lens is, lens is spherical and round and symmetric. Um, but the rays that come in at an angle uh, end up laying on the page, on, on the film or the CCD or whatever you want to think of it as in a really, really weird shape, okay? And uh, so, yeah, there's lots of reasons why lenses, simple lenses, just, just don't work, okay? Now let's consider another thing. Let's, uh, let's go back. Let's make it simple again. Um, let's see. We will go just on axis. And um, we can try to look at color, okay? So what wavelengths do we have? So right now, um, we really don't have uh, color in there. We just have one particular wavelength. So I'm going to, oops, uh, I just, select. oh, there we go, hit the select button. Okay, so now we have different colors. Okay, we have 
these are scientifically chosen lines because they're discrete lines of different gases that it doesn't really matter. There's a blue line, a green line, and a red line. That's it. There's 480 nanometers, 580 nanometers, and 650 nanometers. So red, green, blue. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to put red, green, blue, this thing. All right. So now we have, um, let me show you, we have uh, various wavelengths, like I said, red, green, blue. Okay. So we're going to be, we're going to be using red, green, blue. And let's look at this. Let's turn on, um, let's see, we have to get rid of this box here. Oops. Um, we are going to be able to look at all three wavelengths at the same time. And if we look way out here, now we can see that we have different colors over here. And those different colors are where the different wavelengths focus. So now we have what's called chromatic aberration, okay? And so not only does the lens not work because of rays that go in the middle and rays that go in the edges focus differently. We saw that before with monochromatic light. Now we have um, chromatic light and the chromatic light can uh, focus in different places because of that. Now, if we do a spot diagram, we can see that uh, different colors, let me, let me zoom back out again. There's a little uh, thing in the corner here can I just zoom in on that? No. Anyway, there's red, green, blue is, is, is the actual wavelengths, 480, 580, and 650 nanometers. And you can see that the red light gets focused in closer, and then the blue light gets focused more, is, is a bigger blur, right? Can, these are kind of blur circles as well. Maybe these are a bit confusing because we're using a uh, regular type of pattern. So I've told, told it to use a random type of pattern. Optics engineers like the more structured one because it gives them more, more information. And then I can give it, I can tell it, say, let's give it more, more density. So you can see that the red light is focused really tight. And then the green circle is kind of blurrier and the red and the blue is very, very blurry. So this is how color blurs into space. Okay. And then we can take that and we can say, okay, let's make it go off axis as well. And we can unzoom. And so now over here, we can see we have uh, a really big blur and we can take a look at the spot diagram for that. And we can see, okay, remember we had this type of pattern and let's go back to the uh, high density and dithered. And you can see that this one was, was a nice kind of spot looking type of thing. And then over here, we got this really big blurry thing because we're entering the, the lens off axis and uh, it gets smushed all around. So if you're building a camera, you know, the edges is blurred and the center is maybe sharp. Maybe you should focus kind of in between. I can tell this thing to kind of optimize for that. Um, I can say I'm going to make the focus variable and I am going to give it a, uh, some kind of target. Um, let's see here, default merit function. All right, turn that off. I'm going to optimize. So I've told it to optimize the system. And uh, this is now what it came up with. So that I think you saw that it got a little bit tighter. So what it's doing is it's um, it's kind of trying to optimize. So you can see that the uh, the color aberration kind of got better. It's kind of made it kind of made the the red blurrier and maybe the blue less blurry. It's kind of hard to see on that, but that's sort of what it's doing. It's trying to. It's trying to optimize what it sees here and what it sees here, what it sees in the center, and it tries to optimize that everywhere. And that's the whole art into building lenses is trying to massage these lenses into doing doing the best thing. We can also say, okay, let's make the uh, curvatures of these two lenses variable. Oops. 
I'll make the two curvatures variable as well. So now the program can vary the shape of these lenses and it can vary the distance and everything. And we will tell it to, to optimize and we will let it show you when it's doing its thing. And now you can see that it's trying to make the very, very sharpest things, okay? And so we need to stop this thing here, terminate. All right, you can see that what it said, in order to make this work, I need to have an infinitely long distance for the, uh, <laughs> for the focus. So that obviously didn't work. So let's go back to ground zero here. Okay, so let's start over. Let's say, okay, well, we don't want to change the focus. That's fixed. So we'll just remove that variable. We'll say we're going to focus right here at 50. But we are going to let it change the, the two variables that are the curvatures of these things, okay? So let's see what that does. And there we go. It, uh, it finished now. So it said that these two shapes are better. I get, I get better spots out here if the front is not quite as curved and the back is curved more, okay? And if we look at the spot diagram, you can see that things are getting better, right? That our off-axis one isn't as wild as it, as it used to be, right? So um, there are good shapes and there are bad shapes. And uh, yeah, and then uh, in order to go to the next steps, you need to introduce more lenses. The more variables, the more control you can get over the lens. So adding different elements. Right now, the only two variables we had were um, the two curvatures. But if we add a second lens, then we have two more curvatures. And we could also vary the thickness of the lens or the spacing between the lenses or where the aperture stop is or a bunch of other things. So anyway, just a brief glimpse into simple lenses are not all that great.